Hey, if you tuned into my channel, that that's cool. I I make them for myself more than anything, uh, just to keep my brain working, right? Because uh, it's always good to keep yourself engaged and and to make it and to feel like you have a purpose, um, which is which is really important to me. Uh, so this this is just my background, right? Um, whether you want to whether I need to validate myself or not, um, you know that's that's up to you um, on on my qualifications to um, provide commentary. All right, so a little little bit about me. Um, 23 years United States Army, uh, retired as a lieutenant colonel um, in o October 2020. Uh, really exciting time to retire from the Army in the middle of the craziness of the first, you know, six months of COVID pandemic. Um, <clears throat> served at, as an armor officer, right? So I'm a, I'm a tank and cavalry guy uh, by trade. Um, spent my career in, in armor, cavalry, infantry, and special operations units. Um, uh, had a couple of stints as an instructor, uh, which is a lot of fun. Uh, I really, really appreciate teaching, uh, especially at the undergraduate and graduate level. Um, but that's, that's what I really enjoy. Um, and, and I did a stint in um, Army Human Resources Command uh, as well as, a, as doing a little flesh peddling for the Army. Um, so yeah, pri primarily an armor, I'm an armor officer by trade, uh, but the last time I was on a tank was in December of 2006, all right, so I openly admit that. It's been a long time since I've been tanking, because um, I always ran my career as, I, I do what the Army needs me to do, um, and the Army there is there to do what I need the Army to do for me. Uh, so I, I just I tried to always have that mindset and relationship with the army, uh, and, and it worked out for me. I had a great I had a great career. I was selected for battalion command. I was uh, of a tactical armor battalion. Um, you know that's that's the you know the pinnacle, the summit of a of an armor officer's career. You're selected to command a real tank battalion, right? I was and I was heading to command one three seven armor. Uh, at Fort Bliss, Texas, right? 37th Tank Battalion, commanded by Creighton Abrams in World War II um, during the, the relief of Bastogne, right? Like, that's it's, it's a dream battalion for any armor officer um, to go to go command. Um, uh, but I had a, a third back surgery and, and a surgery to repair a torn Achilles tendon um, and, and made a, a really hard decision that, like, Physically, it is physically irresponsible for me to, to continue um, in the army. Um, it's it's irresponsible to the the officers, non commissioned officers, and soldiers um, that would lead. And, and I'll figure out a, a way to still serve um, to serve them uh, without continuing to serve in, in the active component army. Like you know, so obviously, a c incredibly difficult decision for. For someone to make who's spent their entire adult life um, doing that, you know, but but I did, um, um, you know, some days some days you regret decisions, some days you don't. Uh, but that's a little bit of my military background, right? So I I served as a tank platoon leader, scout platoon leader, tank company commander, uh, headquarters company commander, uh, instructor at the uh, maneuver captain's career course, just like the. A low graduate level course for uh, armor, infantry, uh, special forces, and international officers at the captain major level, right? So U.S. officers, it's a captain, and several of our international officers would be majors when they came through the course. Um, then I went to serve at Human Resources Command in the G3 uh, as the current operations officer, so I worked structure documents for structure. Um, and the Army Strategic Readiness Update was a big, uh, big piece of what I worked uh, while there. Right, so it really opened my eyes to the Army Enterprise, as they call it. Um, from there, I, I went to the United States Air Force Air Command and Staff College and Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama, for a year. Uh, great experience. I'm so thankful I went to the Air Force School and not the Leavenworth at the Army School. Um, I learned to speak some Air Force. Um, probably a better joint education than the Army has. Um, and also while there, 
um, you know, my, my research focus was on uh, the Jewish diaspora in Central and Eastern Europe, um, really from 1890 uh, through uh, the end of the Cold War. Uh, so kind of interesting to have that as your research topic for an entire year um, at, a, at a military school. Um, so from there, um, because I went to Air Force School, I didn't have the face-to-face -face interaction with the uh, my armor branch assignment officer from Human Resources Command. So I just did it through email. I just said, send me to the first striker brigade going to Afghanistan. Um, and so I went to first first brigade, 25th Infantry Division, Fort Wainwright, Alaska, um, and I was sent to 124 Infantry. Uh, service in battalion XO, right? So I'm in an infantry battalion for two years. I was in battalion XO for two years um, there, and a great assignment. Uh, great people, great, great mission. Um, as soon as I got there, uh, our deployment date to Afghanistan got pushed and pushed and pushed. But then we came off and we became a regionally aligned force for you know, United States Indo Pacific Command. Um, so that was that was an interesting shenanigan. Um, my third year in Alaska, I served as the brigade executive officer for one two five. Um, so I went through an eighteen day proof of concept NTC rotation as a brigade XO um, fighting uh, the Russian what we thought <laughs> was the Russian new generation warfare doctrine. Um, <laughs> you know how, how things turn out. Ukraine might might have. We might have overestimated their uh, how how Russia fights, uh, but regardless, we we fought that hybrid uh, Russian threat um, at the NTC for 18 days in the box. Um, you know, so I got to do that as the brigade XO. Uh, so really synchronizing everything that the brigade does um, and controlling the the deep fight for the brigade is a lot of what I did there. Um, you know, and uh, and also you know, brigade commander and the three were really focused on the night fight, and uh, so I focused on you know integration of all our our enabling capabilities that allows the brigade commander to fight the brigade. Uh, that's what the XO does, right? You're not the commander; uh, you you enable the brigade commander to command. Um, so, you know, any the the information operations, psy psyops, civil affairs. Um, our, our deep deep fire close combat attack rocket artillery deep cannon artillery uh, uh, UAS um, uh, you know planning with the aviation task force their manned unmanned uh, teams which was a pretty new concept for that rotation in 2015 um, and then also you know maintaining a focus on you know, I talked about some of the non-lethal stuff, how we shape the non-lethal side that enables the, the lethal side, um, you know, and, and so that, that's what I spent my effort on, you know, um, so, you know, I, I didn't really sleep for 18 days, um, and, and thankfully I had a great driver who took care of me and made sure I ate food and slept, uh, which is not easy for, a, you know, a, a young specialist uh, to do as a sir. You need to eat. Here's food. Stop what you're doing. Um, but I, I, had, I had great soldiers um, who really took care of me. Um, from there, I went to forces, uh, United States Army Forces Command, uh, four-star headquarters at Fort Bragg. Uh, I absolutely hated the job. Hated it. Um, I was selected to be the Deputy Commanding General's aide de camp while there. Uh, told him, I don't, I don't want to be your aide. Uh, <laughs> So instead, I took a, a year-long deployment um, that ended up being a really life-changing role uh, for me. Uh, I served as the J-5 Director for Special Operations Command Forward East Africa. So there we had responsibility for, um, my desk was primarily in Djibouti, um, but we had responsible for the East Af the Horn of Africa, East Africa country special operations, right? Uh, so. Somalia is the focus uh, with a little bit of Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, uh, a little bit of Tanzania. Uh, we had to touch South Sudan during uh, embassy evacuation there. Uh, Burundi, Rwanda were in, in the responsibility. Eritrea, but we never really did anything there. Um, 
but you know, a, a great assignment. Uh, spent a lot of time on the ground inside Somal, all, all over Somalia, uh, to include Puntland, um, you know, Mogadishu, out in the rural areas. Um, you know, so a, a great, a great assignment um, as a as a strategic planner for special operations. And and there I was I was in charge of our um, all of our surrogate force special programs, uh, uh, as well as the the train and equip uh, programs. Uh, I also I also was in charge of uh, posture uh, of special operations in in Somalia and Kenya. All uh, right, so our, our our locations and a lot of a lot of negotiation to make sure we had the right stuff built at the right time with the right infrastructure and life support. Um, so it's kind of a pain in the butt, but um, really really enabling the the folks on the ground to to get after um, defeating Al Shabaab. Uh, and I also had a, 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 a lot of responsibility with uh, planning the reopening of the U.S. Embassy in Mogadishu, which did happen um, in October of 2017. Um, you know, so great, great momentum uh, there. Uh, my final assignment um, was as the professor of military science at Kent State University. Uh, so served as a university department chair, uh, full professor at Kent State, Youngstown State, and then University of Mount Union. Um, and three years of training, teaching, educating, you know, the, the next group of officer leaders from the United States Army um, and a great assignment. Uh, and a lot, a, lot of, a lot of great kids out there are now lieutenants, uh, some of them captains now. Um, and the Army, and, and they're... And, they're in Eastern Europe or preparing to go to Eastern Europe um, to be a part of the mission there um, for, for our nation, for, for NATO, and in support of Ukraine. Um, so, you know, uh, proud of them and, 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 and proud of the work we did um, to, to get them ready to go. Um, civilian education side, I have a bachelor's in history from The Ohio State University. Um, focus was military history. Um, I have a master's in criminal justice, a uh, master of military operational art and science from Air Command and Staff College, um, and I'm, I'm attempting to complete my dissertation. Uh, so I have a PhD in global leadership and change from Tiffin University uh, as well, right? So I'm, I'm a knuckle-dragging, you know, gunslinger. That's, that's what I love, right? I love war fighting, um, but I'm also really interested in why, why it's necessary, um, and the causes, conditions of, of the competition that leads to the conflict, right? So when you talk, you know, my research interests, my research interests are great power competition, um, and, I, and I have one one article um, published so far on great power competition, focused on China, not Russia, um, and it's the economic uh, competition. Uh, part of foreign foreign direct investment in China, right? So, you know, really exciting topic uh, for, for a guy who likes shooting guns and tanks. Um, and then my other research interest is, is leadership, right? Um, and really, and really, it's the ethical and moral uh, aspects of leadership. You know, how do, how do we develop leaders who make good ethical and moral decisions? Um, Predominantly in a, an adaptive, when faced with an adaptive challenge, um, you know, so combat is an is an adaptive challenge, right? You're constantly bombarded with adaptive challenges in combat. Uh, so that's kind of what drove me to, to my research interest, right? Is you know my life experiences, my my previous education. Um, yeah, so uh, no longer uh, affiliated with the Department of Defense or the United States Army. But maintain obviously a, a large interest in in real politic um, and what's really happening and what are the underlying causes and themes and messages of great power competition and, and conflict. Um, you know, so that's that's why that's why I'm I'm, I'm keeping my, trying to keep my finger on the pulse uh, with Russia's invasion of Ukraine um, and trying to understand. And ask, I'm asking questions more than more than anything. I'm asking quest, 
some some questions and and trying to get a, a, a you know a nascent understanding of why um, is, is kind of my focus and what I want to do I'm not I'm not trying to save the world I'm not going to right? I'm a dude living in Northeast Ohio um, but and I also try to ask some questions that no one no one else is really asking right like my video yesterday on, on education right no one's asking the question about Russian education uh, as to you know what why is Russia having military tactical failure is it well ask the question is it is it education is it morale what, you know there's there's multiple avenues we can go down to is it is it in, inefficient leadership in the Russian army right you know the you know if you go out and you conduct the empirical research you it's probably all of that you know it's a combination of all of that right um, yeah but it's kind of hard to do when uh, they're prosecuting combat operations right now um, so you know that's 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 me that's my background um, so retired army lieutenant colonel working on his dissertation I'm on my third rewrite of chapter one second rewrite of chapter two of my dissertation um, uh, focus on adaptive leadership right um, you know so I, I'm working on that and I, I coach I coach hockey uh, so right now, hockey season's over, and I don't coach baseball or lacrosse in the spring. So here, I, here I am. I focus on you know continuing my my doctoral uh, work. Uh, all my coursework's complete, thankfully. Um, so I'm working on my dissertation, and I'm and I'm following what's happening in Ukraine, um, and watching my kids play their sports in the spring. So. That's that's me. That's my qualifications, if you can call them that. Uh, those are my interests, and uh, if you if you enjoy what I'm doing, great. If you don't, um, you go watch TikTok. That's fine. Right, it's America. You can do whatever you want. So enjoy. Have a great day, and slava Ukraine.